Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Z. Welcome back to Netflix Reviews. We're talking about a little series called Lost in Space. You guys might have heard of it. Now, uh, one thing I do want to say before we get started is if you liked the movie as a kid, don't go back and watch it as an adult. That's a horrible idea. I did that a few years ago. I went back and watched Lost in Space because it was absolutely, like, it was just such an enjoyable movie as a kid. And I was like, oh my god, like, what was I thinking? The CGI and the acting and everything. I mean, there's a lot of good qualities to it. I'm not going to bash it. And this isn't really a review on that. But I just want to give you a, a heads up. Don't go back and watch it. So, just getting started. Um, one thing I want to get out of the way, it's not a good, it's not a bad. But what year does this series take place in maybe i missed it maybe it was one of those small details that was talked about that i just missed but i don't ever remember them establishing like an exact year or timeline for when this is happening i mean there's parts where it looks like okay maybe it's just 2018 it's present day and then there's other parts where it's way too futuristic so i have no idea what year this happens if you guys are here to find out i'm telling you i don't have the answer so i apologize so first off a uh, non-spoiler review i always just give a quick number um i would say this series was really good if you're a sci-fi fan you're going to enjoy this series and for a sci-fi series i would give it a good like seven out of ten i really enjoyed it it was visually stunning just beautiful and i'll get more into that later um so the visuals are really cool and if you're just into like weird creatures and sci-fi things and space and and, you know all that and robots and futuristic stuff then you're gonna have a good time with this series so go watch it seven out of ten strong i enjoyed it good acting everything like that checked off checklist checked off done good series i enjoyed it so let's get into the uh spoiler part and i'll just first off i'll just go over all the negative stuff let's just get the negatives out of the way because there are there's quite a few but i don't want it to seem like i'm bashing the series because i just gave it a good review so that wouldn't make any sense so um the first thing that really bugged me is when will first found the robot he had this, it's like a professional like uh, thing you would use to strangle somebody. It's like a cord, like a metal cord with two wood things on the end. And it's a professional uh, strangling device. And when I first saw that, I'm like, what kind of psychotic kid is just carrying around this strangling cord? You know, and he uses it to saw the tree limb off, which I get that. It was a way to set that moment up, but like... They made the kid look like a sociopath right off grip. I'm like, why does he have a professional strangling cord? Why? They never answered, of course, but it's just one of those things that bothered me. And I really didn't, in fact, that they made the robot a bad guy at first. That It was just a little thing. It just kind of bothered me, man. I wanted the, the robot to be pure at heart and everything like that. And he really wasn't throughout this entire series. He's really conflicted and at times really volatile and dangerous to, like, Will and his family and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, man. Like, I don't know. I, I didn't really think that setting him up as the bad guy was uh, a good idea but I can see why it was really important to the story so just another little thing that bothered me okay so let's talk about the bad guy like literally they might as well had a, a commentator come out onto screen and be like here is your antagonist everybody this is your bad guy just to just FYI just to let you know like literally it was so obvious they set her up in such an obvious way it's like oh this is gonna be the bad guy of the series didn't really take too much away from it. it I just thought it was funny that it was so obviously set up and with her like they there were times she was she was such a conflicting character okay this really bothered me because there were times where it made it seem like they were trying to make you like her but they did such a good job of making you absolutely hate this bitch. Like, she was like nails on a chalkboard. By the end of this season, I was just over. I was done with her. I wanted her dead. I'm like, get this bitch out of here. Like, she was so annoying. And they did this little thing where they tried to set it up. I always said that the thing that makes a really good villain is if they believe that they're the good guy. And they tried to do that with her, but it doesn't work at all. I don't know if it was her acting or the writing or what. It was just something about it where I could tell that's what they were trying to do. But it didn't work. So, and it stood out very obviously. But like I said, like why I didn't understand some of the writing and choices with her. There were some really good things she did. Really good things she did. Like when she saved the dad at the end of the movie with the harpoon gun. And then in turn, the dad was able to save Will. Which that in itself, that is an awesome fucking moment, by the way. The end of this season so good. Not to jump ahead too much. But that was a really awesome moment. I love that. But yeah, so she did some really good things in this season. And it was like they're trying to make her likable. 
but you just hate her so much, and it's such a conflicting idea. I didn't really understand where they were trying to go with her. She, she was really, the tone was really off-putting. There's a scene, and this might be nitpicking a little bit, but there was a scene that just kind of bothered me, and it was when, and there was a lot that bothered me that I'm not going to talk about, because that would be really nitpicking, but um, this scene really stood out because there's this scene where the uh, a huge satellite, well, first off, there's an earthquake, and then a huge satellite falls down right next to this ship where Don is, and um, it traps the uh, the husband and the wife, the mom and the dad, and Don's right next to it, and Don, he doesn't feel the earthquake, he doesn't hear the satellite fall, nothing, and he's in this room full of glass whiskey bottles, and he has no reaction to any of this, and that just bothered me, and it ended up not being a big deal, because he went and saved him anyways, like five minutes later, he's like, are you guys trapped in there, you know, <laughs> I was just like, dude, like, this guy's so oblivious. Like, it, there was just an earthquake, and then, like, this fucking, like, 50-foot-tall satellite crashed into the ground, and you were totally oblivious. So, that just bugged me. Why didn't they... So, when the kid was stuck under the tanker, when they were going through that, like, basically, it's a minefield, and the kid got stuck under the gas tank, why didn't they dig him out? That bothered me. I never understood that. There's this huge conflict of, like, oh, if we move the tank, we're gonna lose all the gas... Uh, but if we don't move the tank, the kid's going to die, which both ended up happening anyway. But I was like, he's trapped under dirt. There's dirt underneath him. Start digging. Like, start digging on the sides and underneath him and then pull him out. Like, and I would think of that in literally two seconds. These are doctors we're dealing with. Some of them, like the colony leader and some of the smartest people, engineers and stuff. Don was there. He's an engineer. Some of the smartest people. And they can't figure out to dig this kid out from under this tanker. I don't know. It was just mind-blowing how poorly written that scene was. If you have trouble dealing with claustrophobia things, this series is going to be a problem for you. Because they play to that so much. There are so many times, starting with the first episode all the way to the last episode, where there are just people trapped. Trapped in ice. Trapped in, uh, not, it's not lava, Was that, tar. Trapped inside vehicles, trapped under vehicles, trapped, just trapped, you're trapped, you're constantly trapped. <laughs> like this whole episode, they play, they love playing off your uh, claustrophobic fear. So if you, if that's an issue for you, warning, because you're going to have a lot of that. That scene where they're doing the uh, the test runs, you know, where they're, they're trying to see if the father can withstand, like, passing out. And then he has, like, 30 seconds to wake up and take control of the ship and vent and everything like that. And uh, then they run it with Don. And the very first try, they run it successfully. And then they're like, okay, we launched tonight. Let's go. And Will's like, well, hold on. He's like, shouldn't we run it a couple more times? Which is, thank you, because that's exactly what I thought. I'm like, wait a minute. You ran it the test one time, like... You just ran it 50 times, now you ran it once successfully, that's it, you're just, you're good to go. And the mom responds, we don't have time. And I'm like, well, oh, hang on, you just said that the launch was tonight, so it sounds like it's at least a few hours away, right? It's If it's not nighttime right now, which it wasn't, and the launch is tonight, you have at least a few hours, if not like 5 or 10. This is a literally like a 30 to a minute long test. You have time to run 120 more of these test scenarios. So I just, like that was my, again, mind-blowingly bad writing in a good series. Oh, and by the way, when they said that they were basically launching in a tin can, if you've seen the movie, the fucking movie, uh, The Martian, that guy is launching in a tin can, okay? You are not, when you see that ship take off, that is a full ship. That is not a tin can. Just just to let you know the writers of this ship. So they tried to set up a couple different love stories. You had the mom and dad, and then you had the sister, and then you had the other sister who both had guys that they liked. And two of those love stories were really well done. Uh, the mom and the dad was super interesting and really well done. I love that. And then uh, the uh, the black sister and Don's kind of love-hate relationship. That's just, a, it's a really fun, interesting relationship that I thought was really well written. And then, but the, the redheaded sister, and like, I'm sorry, I don't know all their names right off grip. I can't, I'm not thinking of them right now, but <laughs> I'm just like the black on the red. No, but the redheaded sister, like her little love story there, it didn't make any sense. Like it, it was not interesting. Um, it was kind of awkward and uncomfortable. So out of three love stories, they did a really good job of two. So I would say overall, you know, that's pretty much a win. We all knew. Okay, we all, everyone watching this season right now, seen it coming, 
that the doctor was working her way up to gaining control of the robot. That was, it was no surprise. There was, it was like, no, oh my God, she did it. Like the whole time she's working her way up. And so that kind of bothered me at first. I was like, it's kind of a negative. I could see it coming from like episode two all the way to the end. She gains control of the robot. But then I was like, but I, I knew it was going to happen. But it was really fascinating seeing how she manipulated all of these different people. And she was able to control all of these different people without them realizing it in order to reach her ultimate goal. So that was like a, a thing that really bothered me that I thought was a negative that actually ended up being a positive. So there's two things here that really kind of bother. Well, actually three. So three things here that really kind of bothered me. First off, they don't address when and how the robot crashed. Why did the robot crash? She has super advanced technology and he's just crashed on this planet. They, they never address it, never once, because they just don't want to touch on it. Because I think it was something they probably had trouble like. We, we don't fucking know. He, he wrecked. We need that. It's important for the story, but we don't know how or why. So they don't bother touching on that. That's fine, whatever. It was one thing that bothered me. Another thing that really bothered me is the Star Wars theme music. Uh, that, like, they straight up... There were parts of the soundtrack where I was like, oh my god, that, if I close my eyes, I'm watching Star Wars right now. Straight up, stolen Star Wars music, you could tell. The third thing that really bothered me was the flashbacks. The flashbacks were way con too convenient. Like, treat your audience like they have some sort of intelligence. You know, don't treat us like we're dumb. They would literally do this throughout the entire season. See, normally a season would do this. They'd have a flashback, maybe early, episode one, episode two, they'd have a flashback. Then in like episode seven or eight, they might refer to why that flashback was important. You, you see the setup and you're like, oh, that's, that's why that did that. No, okay. This, scene, this series, they would literally do a flashback. Like, for example, I'll take Will's radio. They go to the flashback of Will's radio and why he has it and why he knows Morse code and how he's able to talk to his dad. And then immediately after the flashback, they flash to Will using the radio to talk to his dad. And that was how they introduced for the first time. That was the first time we were seeing the radio ever. And they used the flashback to set it up. And I'm like, man, that, it bothered me. I'm like, wow, you just, just fucking throw it in our face, you know? <laughs> like, don't leave anything up to us whatsoever. You just, literally, commentator comes out on screen. By the way, Will has this radio. He used to talk to his dad. That's why you're about to see this scene here. Okay, thank you. You know? <laughs> like, give us some credit. We're not that dumb. Jeez. Like, I, I just felt like the flashbacks could have been set up a little bit better. Okay, so I'm done. I'm done bashing the movie. Let's go ahead and get into all the things I loved about this series. Because I really did enjoy this series a lot. The very first thing I want to say is at first glance, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but at right, just at first glance, before he talks or, you know, you see any of his mannerisms or anything, the father looks like Michael Fassbender. I'm just going to come out and say it. I think that's who I'm thinking of, the Assassin Creed guy, and, uh, you know, he's in a ton of stuff, aliens and all that. <clears throat> uh, he looks like my Michael Fassbender to me. So <laughs> I'm just going to come out and say that. And that's a positive because I'm a huge fan of Michael Fassbender. I've seen probably most of his work. He's an amazing actor. So, yeah, that's that's on the positive list. That was that was really interesting that they picked him. Second thing that really stands out is this show is so visually stunning. It's so beautifully done. All the way from the first episode where the daughter's being trapped in the ice and the water slowly freezing around her. And, uh, you know, it's all the way to, like, the purple floating, uh, like, jellyfish. And then you had the little rock crabs that they look straight up just like rocks until they start moving around. And it, just everything. Even, like, the dinosaurs were done really well. I call them dinosaurs because that's what they literally look like. A, like, Komodo dragon dinosaur hybrid thingy. Um, and the eels and just everything. Everything was visually stunning. It was so well done. I, I enjoyed it so much. So if you enjoy sci-fi and you enjoy those kind of weird creatures and aliens, things like I do. Like even just the first scene where you're seeing the robot for the first time and the robot has four arms and then and four legs like tripods he's standing on and he transforms to look more like Will, to look like more of a human. Even just that scene, the CGI and everything was done so well, I thought. I mean, for a TV show. You know, if this was a Marvel movie, it'd probably get thrashed. But for a TV show, I was like, wow, man. Like, that is, those are some awesome graphics. And like I said, the visuals were just stunning. Well done. That moment when you first hear the robot say, Danger, Will Robinson... That, oh my god, dude. That sent chills down my spine. I was like, there it is. And I was waiting for it. You know, the whole time I'm waiting for it. And then the robot finally says it. 
And I was like, oh, that was badass. And I was really confused, actually, just a side note while I'm thinking about it. At first, I didn't know if this was an alien or a robot. And now I think it's confirmed that it's an alien robot. So aliens made a robot, but yeah. So just side note, side thought, shower thoughts. Um, but yeah, dude, that iconic moment when he's like danger, Will Robinson, I was like, Oh, there it is. There it is. Overall, it was a really great first episode and it had me worried because I saw it was an hour runtime and I was like, and then I seen all the episodes, uh, were hour long runtimes. And I was like, wow, that's really long for, it's going to be hard to get through this. And I had to binge watch it, you know, because I wanted to get this review out as soon as possible. So I'm like, watched it in one day and that had me worried, but it was, it, it ended up being good. It was worth every minute of that runtime. So there were a lot of really emotional scenes in this series. And like I said, as a grown man, and it seems like the older I get, the more I'm affected by emotional scenes. Um, but there were a lot of emotional scenes which made this series really good, I felt like. Um, like the scene where he left the robot in the cave, man, that was a real chappy moment for me. If you've seen the movie Chappy, you get what I mean. But man, I was like, oh man, that that hit my heartstrings. And then like when he made the robot walk off the cliff... I was like, oh, God, dude, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and even, like, the scene when the uh, the mom and the dad are stuck in the tar, underneath the tar, and then they, you know, they realize that they love each other, and then they figure out how to escape. And that scene was so good because it was so emotional and so sad. And, like, I'm like, the dad's going to die. Michael Fassbender's going to die? No, you know? And, like, it had me really, like, tearing up. I'm like, oh, this is so emotional. I can't take it. And then they find a way to escape using helium, and they start laughing in that fucking chipmunk helium voice, dude. I've never gone so fast from, like, emotional, tearing up, sad, to, like, just laughing on the floor, dying. Just fucking laugh out loud on the floor, having a good fucking time. So, well done. That, that was a good scene. Let's just say this. Don really came into his own. And there's a good reason why Don is the only character who I remember his freaking name. Don and Will, okay? <laughs> there's a good reason. I'm a huge Nathan Fillion fan, and Don is the Nathan Fillion of this TV series. If you don't know who I'm talking about, I feel sorry for you. Google him. You'll recognize him right away. But he's an amazing actor. And this is Don is the Nathan Fillion of this series, and it really surprised me because at first I didn't care for him. I was just like, oh, who's this douchebag, you know, thought he died off first off, and then he comes back, he's alive, and um, I'm just, I had nothing, like, I didn't think he was funny, I didn't think anything about it, but it seemed like he evolved as an actor and as a character throughout the story, he really came into his own element, I feel like maybe he got more comfortable on set, more comfortable with some of the other actors and stuff, and man, by the end of the show, he had me la he was... It was good, man. He was good. He he evolved into, you know, a good time. Like, he really came into his own and was really funny and everything like that. And had some really quick whips and jokes and things. So, I really enjoyed that. Okay, so overall, you heard the good, the bad, the ugly, everything like that. The fugly. I like to call it the fugly. You've heard the fugly um, of this show. But, um, like I said, 7 out of 10. Awesome show. And at the end of it... With the way they set it up at the very end, I'm just, I can't wait for season two, man. When they go through that wormhole and you realize that they're in the robots planet now, I was like, man, we're going to get to see the aliens. Like, did anybody realize that? You guys think about that stuff? My very first thought was we're going to get to see the motherfuckers that made this robot. What do they look like? Oh man. Like, I can't wait. I absolutely can't wait. Like they, they set up the, the end of the show so perfectly um, like I said, the doctor saving the husband and everything like that was just really like, it had a kind of like, I don't, I don't want to say like a, a twist at the end, but kind of a little bit for me, it was kind of a twist ending. And like I said, I, I just can't wait for season two solid seven out of 10. You guys need to go check it out. If you haven't seen it yet, why are you watching me go see the show? Now you have my review. There are a couple things I wanted to talk about. Um, first off, I feel like the show raises a lot of questions, man, a lot of interesting things. And I could do like probably an hour to two hour long podcast just on this subject alone. But I just want you guys to think about this as you're watching the show um, about how some of the real questions that this show raises about robots and AI and how dangerous it could be and everything like that. Because it's something that's being talked about right now with uh, I know they're working on creating uh, AI and they're saying whoever is the first country to create AI will probably be the country that like takes over the world or controls the world economy or whatever um i don't know how much is 
truth there is in that or anything. I don't want to get into all that. But I thought it was really interesting that this show found a way, an entertaining way, to bring up such a serious uh, subject. So again, just a really good thing that the show did that I thought was really cool. Okay, so two of the theories that I came up with this show is one, I, I feel like maybe the butterfly is the reason why the robot had such a strong connection with Will and not with the doctor. Remember, when Will first found the robot, there was a little butterfly looking thing, a really cool looking thing. It almost looked like it had an antenna that came up out of it or something like that. I don't know what that was. But it touched Will's finger and then it or flew over to the robots or vice versa. I don't remember which one, but it, it landed on both of them. And I was like, maybe that antenna has something to do with like, you know, cognitive like transferring or something like that. Emotional transference, something like that. Maybe that's why the robot really had such a strong bond with Will because like they really drilled in. This is my other theory is the reason why the robot ends up turning good is because when they have that cognitive transference um, through the butterfly, is he kind of you know now will's part of him he's part of will and will is purity like i would say it like young kids when you have young kids like six seven year olds they're just pure at heart they're pure at mind for the most part i would say there's not too many demonic asshole kids running around in the streets but um you know they're pure and their curiosity and everything is so awesome and their wonderment like that's how i felt about the robot watching this show early on he was like a little kid like learning and i was like man how could such a sophisticated being be like a little three-year-old learning how to talk all over again and learn like just amazed by everything and he does his little uh handprint on the wall and everything and i was like he's a little kid man like when he got destroyed and then he had that cognitive transference with will he it, it like rebooted him literally it's like hard wiping a computer like just factory resetting a computer and it has nothing on it and it has to relearn all the programs and everything that's what happened to him and i mean that like i said it's just some theories of mine but we might we might get them explained we might not i have no idea because the the robot never had that with the doctor like he listened to the doctor a little bit but he wasn't attached to the doctor's hip like at the end of the show the doctor goes to control room and the robot just goes to look for the people and you know he, he's not attached to her hip or anything and then ultimately he ends up turning on her and he goes back with will so obviously they had way more of a thing than uh the, the doctor did with the robot so I, th I feel like the butterfly had something to do with that. And the fact that Will had all this purity and wonderment and he was like a little kid learning, you know, that had a big thing to do with it. So I don't know. Like I said, just an interesting theory that I thought I'd throw out there for you guys to think about. But um, I really hope you guys enjoyed the review. I try my best to get, you know, really in-depth as I can and give you a good reason why I gave it a 7 out of 10. But like I said, you guys are going to have a good time with this show and I recommend it. So go watch it. And as always, thank you for watching. I'm the one and only.